Good afternoon. By far the biggest swell I've seen in at least 10 years, maybe 20 years. And these waves, they're not from around here. They came from thousands of miles away. They are outsiders, they're foreigners, and yet every surfer I know welcomes the arrival of these unusually big waves. You know, everyone I've talked to, all the surfers, we've been looking forward to the arrival of these waves all week. When the waves did arrive, so did the people. Some surfers divide up nature, welcoming the out-of-town waves, but not the out-of-town surfers who want to ride them. You know, some surfers welcome wind and wind waves when they're far away, but not when these conditions are local. We welcome the pelicans and the salmon, but not the seals or the sharks that feed them. We welcome the high tide when it hits the sandbars just right, but not when it swamps out the point breaks. Welcome the wind when it's offshore, but often not when it turns onshore and trashes the waves. You know, I haven't served groundswell in months. I've been happy as can be to ride the wind bumps. You know, it's pretty hilarious. Often I check the surf line forecast in the summer. And it'll say like junky, wind blown out, slop, you know, go do something else. You know, not worth paddling out. And then the same day, I'll check the eye wind surf forecast. And it'll be like, oh, it's nuking. It's epic. You know, best conditions, best day ever. Go get some. The crazy irony of how two different people can see the same event in dramatically different ways. This summer, most of the time, the surf hasn't been big or clean enough to get me excited about going out and risking, you know, being abused by grumpy locals. I've been having so much fun riding the wind bumps with wide open territory and nobody cares who's from where or what, you know, I, I, I completely forgot about localism, that it's even a thing. It just completely disappeared from my consciousness. You know, I couldn't even register the idea that you'd want to keep somebody out. It just, and most people are totally cool. They're totally stoked. They're just happy. You know, the surf is big. This is such an unusual event. It's, it's awesome to witness. And yet, you know, sometimes there's just that one person that wants to bring the whole thing down. The Buddhists have these sayings or, or way of looking at the world as in like there's, there's right speech and it's speaking in a way that's in harmony and, and in line with nature and being kind. And, and then along with that, you know, right action, like right livelihood, the, the idea of being in alignment and having, you know, a, an entire life and life way built around being in the world in a good way and being kind and empathetic and loving to everyone and every being and all that. So for me, like right localism is, is about protection. It's about, it comes from love and, and wanting to take care of these beautiful waves and these beautiful spots and these beautiful ocean and all of nature and all the beings and the creatures in the water and making sure that this, these gems, these, these amazing waves are preserved and protected and taken care of. And so is everyone out there that we take care of each other. We look out for each other. We make sure that whoever wipes out or has, you know, that they come up okay. We check on everybody. We take care of each other. That, that's right, localism. It's, it's about protection and it comes from love. And one of my teachers, you know, talks about how when we're young and we're traumatized, our, our gift, our, our natural way of being in the world gets, gets tr turned. It gets twisted. It, it goes from a gift to protection and survival and it, and it becomes a defense mechanism. So anytime an external condition happens that, that we can't handle, that, that we don't like, we get triggered and our gift becomes survival and we use it in a dysfunctional and disharmonious and, and conflict kind of way of, of creating strife and drama all around us. And so that, that protector you know, goes into the enforcer, the, the controller, the dominator, the intimidator. And it goes from, from a service to the community to a, a volcanic hothead, you know, a, a natural disaster waiting to destroy us all. And, and you just know one's safe because as soon as this person blows up and, and uses their natural gift of protection as, a, as an offensive, as a, as a blow, a strike, uh, just no one's safe. You never know when this person's going to lose their stuff and blow up. And often they're big, they're strong, they're powerful. And so it's intimidating. It's scary to be around. If this enforcer doesn't heal that wound, they start to grow into their power. You know, it's about control and then it, it shifts to power and they start to get their kicks off of having this power over others, being able to, you know, stink eye, give a look, say a word, something that's going to throw somebody off and they'll be able to control that person and get that reaction, that feeling of, of strength. And my teacher refers to this as the abuser's way 
often it's unconscious. They have no idea that they're doing it. Sometimes they do and they just, you know, it becomes habitual. They've just been doing it for so long. They, they don't know any other way. But it's essentially they're, they're feeling really scary feelings. They're feeling hurt. They're back to that, you know, five-year-old kid that was getting hit by a, a, their parent or some other abusive guardian or, or being neglected in some way. And so, they're, you know, that inner child is just screaming for a hug and for, you know, some kind of like, know that they're going to be safe and okay. And so it comes out as, you know, F you and get out of here and get rid of that camera and go home. You know, it comes out as that like screaming child is just begging for someone to come up and give them a hug and say, hey, it's going to be okay. You know, I, ask me how I know. For me, as a, as a parent, it, it's easy to see a child if they're in this kind of distress and, or, you know, throwing a tantrum or just crying and screaming, I, you know, it's easier to see through it and be with them in the moment and be like, oh, you know, the, the, this, my child's having a hard day or this kid's having a hard day and just give them the love that they need or, or listen. You know, but when a big, scary, strong adult who's intimidating and, and you know, posturing in a way that, that seems like there's going to be violence, it's really, really hard. I, you know, I suck at it. I have a hard time. You know, I, I can do it. I have done it. You know, I did it during this trip, but damn, it's hard to like not lose my stuff and not, not, you know, escalate to, to like, okay, calm, deescalate. Like I know what's going on here. And at the same time, it's like not fun. So like from a intellectual place, I, you know, I know what's going on with this person that's losing their stuff and, and feeling flooded and angry. And, you know, I, so like out of the moment, you know, or later, or when I'm, you know, sitting in a room by myself or meditating on a mountaintop, I can, I can get into the, feel into the place of, of how that person, their experience, and I can have compassion. I can empathize and be like, ah, oh, that's really hard to feel those scary feelings and, and to feel like you're, everything you care about is being destroyed or taken away or threatened. You know, that, that's, that's hard for them. You know, and at the same time, we're adults here. It's not okay to behave that way towards people just because you don't like the scary feelings. You, you don't like how someone's doing something, you know, even though they're just minding their own business. You know, it's not okay to go up and blow up at people. You can't just go around treating people like your personal punching bag. That's not okay. There's this thing in surfing called claiming where, you know, someone gets like a great ride or, or some great move or something and they claim it. So in, in you know, spiritual or emotional realm, there's there's... Claiming, you know, owning, naming the feeling like I'm feeling angry and owning it. It's yours. It didn't come from outside you. You know, so we need to transition from blaming and shaming, which is, you know, somebody does something and we, we don't like how we're feeling and we want to blame them. I want to shame them into changing, you know, going from that to to owning it. Like, Oh, this is my feeling. It's coming from in me. That other person has no control over how I feel. So I need to take ownership of my feelings, you know, name it. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling sad and then claim it, own it. You know, like I went to a, a Wim Hof workshop and one of the things that he says is he's going to use people for his mission and not in an abusive way, but in a, in a like, Hey, whoever, whoever comes into my life is an opportunity for me to spread my mission, to, to make the world a better place, to, spread love and joy and empower people. So what I would love to see in the lines of right localism of right protection is when somebody comes to town, you know, when, when a big swell is coming and you know, all these foreigners, all these outsiders, all these surfers or, or kooks or whatever from out of town are coming to be like, Hey, this is an opportunity for me to spread my mission. I'm going to teach people about ocean awareness. I'm going to empower people to take care of the ocean, to take care of the seas, to take care of the waves, to be a steward of nature, of the ocean, of the earth. You know, it's a, it's a, have an information booth. And when everyone comes to town, be like, hey, are you new here? Here, let me tell you. Here, here's, here's how I can teach more people how to be in the world in a good way. And I'm, I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait to tell you about this mission and wh how you can help. You know, when someone shows up with a camera, instead of being like trying to destroy it and get rid of it, be like, oh, maybe this person's a huge YouTuber or some huge blogger, an influencer. This is my chance to get my mission to a global, worldwide, millions, billions of people seeing it level. Like, you know, seeing it as a wonderful opportunity to spread more love and more compassion and, and actual protection, you know, instead of going the other way. But it's an opportunity for us to welcome each other to be in the world. And, you know, there's so much work to be done to clean up the ocean, to protect the waves and, and to be in the world in a better place and to bring more love and healing. 
So when these outsiders come into our world, let, let's seize it as an opportunity to welcome and love each other. So thanks for watching. If you like this, you know, like, subscribe, share it around. Uh, there's a YouTube super thanks that come over to the website, a membership, donate. It's all welcome. Thank you so much.